Most people use Notion like a digital notepad, but they're missing the powerful features that turn it into a true productivity machine. That's why we're looking at the six Notion skills that most people overlook. I've helped thousands of Notion users clean up their workflows, and the same issue keeps coming up. They don't even know what Notion can really do. In this video, I'll show you six important Notion skills that you need to learn with one quick tutorial for each feature. Relations, Notion calendar, charts, groups, buttons, and formulas. Don't stay stuck with static Notion pages. You'll hit limits very quickly. These are the six essential skills that most Notion beginners overlook. I put a lot of effort into these Notion tutorials. It would mean a lot if you subscribe. Let's get into it. For this tutorial, by the way, I'll be using Basic OS. It is my free Notion task template linked in the description if you want, but these skills will work for absolutely any dashboard. So Basic OS actually only has one database, which is the task database. So we have time blocking here, we have our calendar, and we have all of our tasks here as a list. This is the same database just being viewed differently. But what you'll do now is create a new database. And to do that, you'll do forward slash and write database. Now there are very many options here and we're just going to keep it simple by clicking on the table view. Here we're now going to click on new empty database. And this here is going to be your projects database. So I'll write project here. Now we could view this as a list like we have now. So I'll write project one and project two. Or what we could do is click on these three dots here and we could view this differently. And instead of viewing this as a table list, we could view this as a gallery. So here I have project one and project two. Now what we're going to do here for the tasks, I'll just add task one, task two. What we're going to do is add another property. So I'll click on this plus here. And if you don't know what properties are, properties in Notion are the same thing as columns. And this property here will be a relation property. So relation basically means I want this piece of information to talk to another piece of information. And for me, I want this task information to talk to this project information. So here we can say, what do we want it to relate to? And it's coming up in my recents here, the projects. If you're not seeing it, just simply search for the database you want to relate to. So here I'll click on projects. And what we're going to do is say, this is no limit. And I'll turn on here the two-way relation. And now I'll click on add relation. So now you can see this projects column here has appeared. So for task one here, let's say this is to do with project one, and let's say task two here is also to do with project one. If I now click on project one, you can see these tasks are showing up. So automatically any tasks that are relating to project one will show up here. That's how relations work in Notion. Now let's look at the Notion calendar app. Now you're going to want to go to your task list, but you're going to want to see it as a calendar. So if you don't see it as a calendar like this, what you can do is right click and do duplicate and you're going to change the layout here from table to calendar. Now I already have a calendar, so I'll just delete that and scroll up. And what you're going to do is click here on open in calendar. So now my Notion calendar app is speaking to my basic OS system. So my tasks in here, if I let's say uh, give task one here, assign that to today, and we'll say task two here is also for today, because I've given these tasks here today's date, they now appear here in my Notion calendar. Now I'll show you my favorite Notion calendar trick. If I drag these down here, I can start time blocking when I'm going to do them. Now this red line here basically means what the time is right now. So if they're in the past here, they're grayed out. But if I drag them to the future, as you can see, they're more brightly colored. So I'll drag them to when I'm going to do them. I'll say task two at four o'clock to six o'clock and task one, six o'clock to seven o'clock. If I go back to basic OS, you can now see these times showing up here. So four o'clock to six and six to seven. These have automatically appeared. So what we'll do is use the data from Notion Calendar and convert that into time tracking data. So we'll click on this plus here and we'll scroll down and click on formula. Now I'll show you another formula later on in the formula section, but this here will convert our Notion Calendar into minutes. So I'll call this minutes or something like that. You could call it time tracking and we'll click here and we'll paste this formula. It's linked in the description for you. Basically what it's saying is show me the date between the end, so 6 p.m. and the start, so 4 p.m. and show me that information in minutes. So I'll click here on save. So as you can see, it says 120 minutes here and it says 60 minutes here. This is automatically being picked up from my Notion calendar. That's how to connect your Notion calendar to your Notion database. Now let's have a look at Notion charts. Now, if you haven't used Notion charts before, they are absolutely incredible. What we're going to do here is duplicate our task list. And I'll just call this here charts. And of course we can add an icon which seems more applicable. So I'll do the chart. Now for a chart to be useful, we need some good data. So I'll be using the data that we got from our Notion calendar. So what I'll do is click on these three dots now 
and we're going to change the layout from a table to a chart. Now bear in mind for free Notion users, you can only have one chart. If you do have the Notion Plus account, which I really recommend, you can have multiple charts. Now this chart here by default is showing me that I have two tasks. That is not very useful. So I want to see this instead of a vertical bar as a donut chart. Now it's still just saying how many tasks I have here. And that's not how I want to break down this information. So in here, because we're time tracking, I actually want to see this broken down by the minutes. So what we'll do here is click on the data. Now what I want to show here is actually the project. And then I want each slice to represent how many minutes it is. And as you can see here, project one has taken 180 minutes so far. Now, if I add something more to this, so let's add a task three here, task three, and let's make task three here to do with project number two. Well, if I scroll down and go back to my chart now, you're going to see it's 360 minutes total with 180 going to project one and 180 going to project two. So this data is changing in real time. If I make this one hour longer, this automatically updates. Notion charts are insanely underused and super helpful. And that's how to use charts in Notion. Now, let's say you don't want to click on project one here to see all of project one tasks and click on project two here to see all of projects two tasks. Let's say you want to see all of them as a list, but broken down by the different project. Well, what we're going to do is right click on tasks here and do duplicate. And this here will be using a group and we'll write here task by project and click away. And to see these tasks broken down by project, we are going to use this thing called notion groups. So I'll click here on group and here we can say, how do you want to group this by? and I want to group this by the project. So now you can see these tasks get separated from project one to project two. And of course I can add anything directly in here. So I'll say task four, and it automatically gets assigned project one because to be underneath this toggle here, it has to be to do with project one. Or if I add anything here, for example, task five and call this project number two, if I scroll down now, you can see task five sitting here under project two. That's how to use groups in Notion. If we scroll up here, I'm going to show you how to create a button. Now buttons are slightly overwhelming to start with, but once you understand them, they are so useful. You'll write forward slash button and click here on button. Now what we need to do here is give it some rules. So let's say that this is a new task button. When I click on this button, I want it to open up and let me create a new task. So what we want to do here is click on new action and the rule we want when we click on this button is to add a page to. So we want to add a page to our database and our database here is our task database. So I'll click here and it's tasks in basic OS for me. Obviously, if you're not using basic OS, it will be called something different. And before you click on done, we need to set another rule here. So after you've added a page to your task database, so each task here is its own page, as you can see, the next action we need to happen is that we actually open up that page. That way I can actually, you know, start writing down the task and stuff. And now we have to say, which page do you want opened? And that page is the page that we just added. And here we can even say if we want to open it in center peak, side peak or full page, but I want it as center peak. And now I'll click here on done. So now I can very quickly add a new task. So I'll click new task here. Let's call it task seven, project two and click away. I've now created that task in a split second. And if I scroll down here under task by project, I can see task seven sitting here. In my headquarters template, I've done this with notes. I've done this with resources. I've done this with adding urgent and important tasks. I've even got a routine button template. Buttons are such a useful feature in Notion. Now we've already created a Notion formula here with our time tracking, but I want to show you one that's even more advanced. What we're going to do here is click on the plus and we are going to add a formula. This here will automatically tell you the type of task that you're doing. So we'll click on save. Again, you can copy this in the description. So here are the rules. If I write that I have a meeting with John, as you can see, it comes up with communication. Or if I say that I have a call with John, it comes up here with communication. So this formula here is actually automatically picking up words from the name of the task. So if I write email John, it now comes up with email. Or if I write gym, it comes up with exercise. It will also come up with exercise if I write run. And lastly, if I write dishes, it comes up with housework. It will also come up with housework for groceries, cleaning, and cooking. And that is the power here of formulas. Now, if you want to dive more into formulas, then click on this video here where I show a bunch of powerful formulas. Or if you want to save time, then check out my productivity notion template called headquarters and show you how thousands of people have improved their productivity in just two clicks.